Hello everyone, welcome to the Lang Focus channel and my name is Paul. Today we're going to talk about a language that partially descended from English but is not actually English. The language is Tok Pisin, an English-based Creole language, sometimes referred to as Pidgin or Pidgin English. Tok Pisin is one of the official languages of Papua New Guinea, which is located in the southwestern Pacific Ocean, just north of Australia. Its other official languages are English, which is not spoken by most of the population, and Hidimotu. But Tok Pisin serves as the most common lingua franca. And a lingua franca is certainly useful in Papua New Guinea, because it's the most linguistically diverse country on the planet. Okay, it's the most linguistically diverse country in the whole universe. Over 800 languages are spoken in Papua New Guinea, a country of just around 8 million people. With so much linguistic diversity, Tok Pisin is frequently used for communication between people of different linguistic backgrounds. Look at the name of the language, Tok Pisin. Tok means language, but it comes from the English word talk, and also means talk, speech, word, message, news, etc. The majority of Tok Pisin words come from English, but are used with different meanings, or with a wider range of meanings. This word Pisin comes from pigeon, but probably developed from the English word business. Not in Tok Pisin, but rather in a Chinese language. Tok Pisin has also sometimes been called Tok Boy. Boy comes from boy, but actually refers to someone who was an indentured laborer, servant or slave of colonial Europeans, because their bosses or masters referred to them as boy. Tok Pisin began as a pidgin language on the plantations of German Samoa between 1880 and 1914 when laborers from New Guinea were brought over. An English-based Creole in a German territory? Why? Well, laborers from the Solomon Islands and from Vanuatu had already been working on plantations in the Queensland colony in present-day Australia, and they had already developed an English-based pidgin language. In short, they needed a common language for work, so they adopted a small English vocabulary and used the grammar of their Melanesian languages to connect the words together. In this way, a Melanesian English-based pidgin language arose in Queensland. Some of these pidgin speakers from Vanuatu and Solomon Islands later worked in German Samoa alongside the New Guinean laborers, using their pidgin as a lingua franca. People from all of these places brought the pidgin language home with them, where it became widely used as a lingua franca and became creolized, meaning that it became spoken as a native language by some and became used for all aspects of life, not only for the limited functions of the pidgin language. Till this day, the forms of pidgin spoken in Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, and Vanuatu are all quite similar, though they have definitely diverged into their own distinct varieties. After pidgin languages become creole languages, they are technically no longer pidgin languages, but they are still referred to as pidgin in all three countries. Now, let's examine Tok Pisin and see what it's like. Vocabulary as an English-based Creole language, Tok Pisin got most of its vocabulary from English, but words of English origin are usually pronounced quite differently. Following phonological rules inherited from Austronesian languages of Melanesia. For example, brother is pronounced Brata Enough Inap Before Bipo Shark Sak Stand or stand up Sanap Words of English origin are also generally used differently than they are in English. For example, place from the English word place. In Tok Pisin, this means village or hometown area or region. Tevel from the English word devil means soul, shadow, reflection, or image. Close to from English close to means close to, but also nearly or almost. Christmas from the English word Christmas. This means Christmas, but in Tok Pisin, your age is also measured in the number of Christmases you have been alive for. For example, you got Hamas Christmas. This means how old are you? And me got 10 Christmas. This means I'm 10 years old. Since Tok Pisin vocabulary stems from a small English vocabulary, oftentimes one simple word is used to cover a whole set of synonyms in English or a category of items. For example, got from English got or have got. This means to have or to possess. In Tok Pisin, there's just this one word. Colos. From English, clothes. This means clothes, but also blouse or dress. Cross. 
This means angry or annoyed or cross. In English, cross means mildly annoyed, and many North Americans might be unfamiliar with that word. But in Talk Pisin, it's the common word for all degrees of anger or annoyance. Too much. From English, too much. This means very or very much or greatly or too much. And some words have expanded beyond synonyms to cover a wider range of meanings. Stop. From English, stop. This means to be located somewhere, to remain, to stay, to rest, or to be in progress. With this word, it might be a bit harder to wrap your head around its different meanings. If you stop somewhere, then you are there at that place. You are remaining there. You are staying there. You are situated there. The meaning of to be in progress stems from the meaning of remaining because the action is remaining in progress. For example, pen belong me stop long one em hop. This means where is my pen? Pen of me is located at what place? Not all talk piscin vocabulary comes from English. Some words come from German, since Samoa was under German control and parts of New Guinea were under German control when New Guineans returned. Rausim. This means to remove or to get rid of. This comes from German raus, meaning out. Gummi. This means rubber and comes from the German word gummi. Maski. This means it doesn't matter and comes from the German macht nichts which means the same thing. Some vocabulary comes from Malay because of contact with Bahasa Indonesia on the island of New Guinea and contact with regional Malay languages. Susu, meaning milk. This comes from the Malay word susu. Some words also come from Portuguese because of early Portuguese contact with Melanesia as early as the 16th century. For example, sabe. This means to know, to understand, to know how to, to be able to, to be cognizant with, or to be accustomed to. This comes from Portuguese saber, which means to know. Pequenini, which means child or baby, comes from Portuguese pequenino, which means little. And there are also words from many Austronesian languages. Grammar. While the vocabulary of Tok Pisin mainly comes from English, the grammar largely reflects the Austronesian languages spoken by early pidgin speakers on the plantations. Let's look at a few examples here, and later we'll see more grammatical features in context. The predicate marker. All third-person sentences contain a predicate marker, i. Ples inogat wara. The village doesn't have any water. Word for word, this sentence is village, predicate marker, no, have, water. The word i tells us that what comes next is the predicate, the part of the sentence telling us something about the subject, and normally contains a verb. In a language with a simple vocabulary and grammar, it would be easy to hear the predicate as part of the subject if there were no predicate marker. Place no got water could be understood as the village that doesn't have any water, which would leave the listener waiting for a predicate to follow, because that whole phrase sounds like the subject. Next, the transitive verb marker im. When verbs are transitive, in other words, when they are followed by an object, the suffix im is attached. Me like him too much beer. This means I really like beer. I like really beer. Like him consists of like from English like with the transitive suffix im. Aste me look him you long rot. This means yesterday I saw you on the street. Yesterday I see you on street. Look him consists of look from English look with the transitive suffix im. This sentence also contains an interesting word long. Which brings me to the next point, prepositions. Tokpisin basically has two main prepositions. One of them is long, which comes from English along. It's used to cover a wide range of English prepositions. In, by, on, with, from, to, and at. Have a look at this example. All I go long road long Monday long lay. This means they went by road on Monday to lay. They, preposition marker, go by road on Monday to lay. That's the name of a city. The word all comes from English all, but one of its uses is the third person plural pronoun. The other main preposition is belong, which comes from English belong. It covers the meanings of and for, and is often used to indicate possession. For example, This fella emi ka belong brata belong me. This is my brother's car. This, it, predicate marker, car of brother of me. Next, the adjective marker pela, 
The suffix pela is normally added to single syllable adjectives when they appear before nouns. So a big tree is big pela dy. Big comes from English big, and then the adjective suffix is attached to it. Dy is a word from one of Tokpisin's Austronesian substratum languages. It's also worth pointing out that this phrase has no indefinite article. Tokpisin has no definite article and no indefinite article. In other words, no equivalent of the or a. But for clarity, one pela, meaning one, can be used. So this phrase could be one pela big pela dy. One big tree. Notice that one pela comes from the English word one with the adjective suffix attached to it. Okay, we've seen some of its key features, so now let's look at a couple more talk piecing sentences and break them down. Suppose me pla no got enough money long by him house, me pla can walk him house the soul. This means if we don't have enough money to buy a house, we can just build a house. Word for word, it's if we no have enough money to buy house, we can build house just. Suppose comes from English suppose. It is used to mean if. Mi pela comes from English mi, which on its own would mean I, but the suffix pela indicates that it's the plural form we. Belong is used here to mean for. Baim comes from English by and has the transitive verb suffix. Wokim comes from English work, but means to make, build, or repair. Tasol means just or only and comes from English that's all. And one more example. Emmy been spark no go through long sing sing. This means he got really drunk at the party, or she got really drunk at the party. He or she predicate marker past tense marker be drunk badly really at party. M comes from English him, but is used for both male and female, and for subjects and objects in talk piecing. Bin comes from English been and is used as an aspect marker to show completion of an action, effectively indicating past tense in this sentence. Spark comes from English spark and means to be drunk. No good comes from English no good. True comes from English true and is used as an adjective or as an adverb like truly or really. Long refers to the location of the action, and sing sing is a reduplication of the English word sing and is used to mean sing or song, but also for a ceremony involving dancing and singing or for a party. Let's think about bin again for a minute. Talk piscine verbs are basically not conjugated, and the verb form is the same for all persons and numbers and times. To indicate time, you can use a time word like asde, meaning yesterday, tomorrow, etc., or you can use an auxiliary verb that shows aspect, like bin, which shows completion. Another option is to place pinis, from English finish, after the verb. For the future, you can use like, which has the sense of is about to. For things a little farther in the future, you can use the word by or by and by. For example, by me come back. I shall return. By and by and by come from the old-fashioned English expression by and by, meaning after a short time. These words indicating an action's relation to time are not normally necessary if the time is clear from the context and the adverbs of the sentence. Hopefully this video and the language samples within it have given you a sense of what talk piecing is like. The English roots of much of its vocabulary are obvious, but it's also quite obvious that talk piecing is not English. Its grammar is very different, and even its English-based vocabulary is used quite differently. Talk piecing is a language in its own right. It's used in the Parliament of Papua New Guinea, in TV and radio broadcasts, and it's used every day as a lingua franca throughout the country. Though there are books written in talk piecing, it's currently not used much as a literary language, though some people think that it can and should fulfill that role as well. But with English also being an official language and the language of schooling, other people think that English alone should remain the formal and literary language. The question of the day. To native speakers of talk piecing, for some people it's hard to imagine how talk piecing's vocabulary is sufficient for all parts of life. Do you find that talk piecing is sufficient to say everything you want to say? Are there times when it's not? And for other people, if you want to hear some more talk piecing, I will put a link to a talk piecing news broadcast in the description below. Listen to that clip and let us know in the comments what you think. Can you understand any of it? Does it sound like English? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out Lang Focus on the various social media platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And once again, I want to say a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, especially these ones right here on the screen. They are my top-tier Patreon supporters. Many extra special thanks to them. 
And to everyone, thank you for watching and have a nice day.